Hi and welcome to Fit in the Solar Panel. I think it's a very beneficial job that you can do in the winter. You can fit it to anything, a van, a boat, a garden shed. This is just a boat. So step one, where's it going to go? Well, let's have a look at the areas we've got to put one. Well, I have a look at the decks on my boat and I think, where do I walk all the time and where don't I walk? Where do I seem to have fairly flat areas that don't get used very much? I think there's quite a good space just here in front of the mast. I avoid walking round here because the smooth bit in the centre here in between the two grips from there to there is slippy as hell when wet. I've never found myself wanting to walk on the hatch so one about the same size as the hatch would be a fair panel to have. I do step up here quite a lot so that's an area I can't really use. But on top of here, I've never been up there. I've never walked on top of that roof, I don't think. It's just smooth, so it would be a death trap to walk on when wet. This brings us to step two. I need to get the tape measure out and measure the areas or area that I fancy fitting a solar panel to. Obviously a pen and paper or your notes on your phone and record this information down because when you go home you're going to be looking for a solar panel that will possibly fit in the space you've got to fit one. I think this is a top space up here because I never ever go up here so it's right out of the way and hopefully right in the sun. This second space however on the deck in front of the mast has one big advantage. That's it there, it's a stainless steel swan neck. It's a gland where wires come in and out of this thing. The wires just go straight up and into the boat from there. No drilling, no messing. So take measure out and let's measure this area and see if we can find a panel that might fit along here. The advantage here though is we don't have a width restriction, just a length restriction. But it'd be nice if it was no wider than the hatches and then it would all look right. So armed with this information, let's move on to step three. What panels are available? So I go to eBay as first choice of call, I suppose like a lot of people do, and I find something that fits in one of my spaces quite well. Well, I kid you not, I put the order in and the very next day, the very next day, 24 hours later, this solar panel arrives on my doorstep. I never purchased just the solar panel though. I bought a small kit, it seemed an okay price, and it said it had everything I'm going to need in order to do the job. This is how it came, all neatly packaged. My house batteries at the moment are 85%, 12.7 volts, and the old analog meter sort of agrees as well. This is the pretty little thing when I whip it out the box, complete with cables wired already to it. The badge on the back says it's a 50 watt panel and it's capable of putting in nearly 3 amps into your battery when the sun's shining well. Well that's enough to run all my electronics if I wanted to. But it'd certainly charge the battery up. This brings us to step 4. Let's try the solar panel in place to see if it fits where we've actually measured it for. As you can see, I've gone for a very very thin panel so it's not a trip hazard on the deck and also maybe if my foot does go on it on different times the panel won't get damaged like a, a glass panel because these are slightly flexible and will take your weight but the idea is actually not to walk on it full stop now i'm actually beginning to think it were a good choice it fits better than i'd hoped it would fit and it matches in with the deck hatches really well as well Looks to me play a big part in everything I do. Have you seen all that wire? I got five metres of wire included in this as well, which is probably going to be enough to run the distance. Hey, look at that. That's pretty good, isn't it? You've not noticed, have you? See these lines here of the pattern of the deck? They actually meet the solar panel lovely, as if it's supposed to be there. This brings us to step five. Putting the panel down in place. Well, these are just self-tapper screws, four of, one in each corner. So quite easy to do. Just drill a pilot hole, stick a bit of silicon in it, stick the screw in it. This is going to start off quite easy with one of these, with the wires going in there. Running the wire in step six is quite a long one. 
inside the boat I'll need to take this block of wood off here to access the wires that come in from the bottom of the mast that's the beginning I always cut the wires on an angle to shove them through an hole that makes it easy and then I tape the other wire to the first wire and pull that through with that then I'll pull all the wires through and finish off outside and if it wasn't windy I'd throw a mat on the solar panel so it wasn't producing any electricity while I work I've stuck a 10 watt halogen in the end of the wires it's they have pins on the end of the halogen bulbs and you stick them in and normally you get an orange glow but I think it's too dark out so I'll go to the multimeter and I'll try the multimeter first try it goes over the 20 range so I have to slip her up one second try it comes up with 20.5 volts which shows me it's capable of charging when the sun shines that to me says everything outside the boat now is perfectly fine and the power's coming in to where I want it to which is the end of the leads so I'll stick my allergen bulb back in and leave it like that while I root it well I'm going to be quite a lazy devil rooting it I ain't taking the roof down so I've run it out of here through this little trunk here in the tongue and groove I've hidden it now underneath the bottom cover of the hatch and I've brought it round. I've filed two little dints in there for it to come out of that cover and all I'm going to do is drill this wood and poke it straight in because the majority of all the wiring is hiding in there. So from starting here in the deck where you can't see it through the box, the wooden box, you can see it just there for a second but then it hides completely under this uh, bottom of the hatch uh, trim and then the last place you can see it's just there sticking out of the hatch trim. I fed the wires into this box which is behind the chart plotter. There's lots of wires already in there, all the instrument wires hide behind there. The wires then turn up in the chart drawer itself. There they are in the corner, I've removed the trunken and I'm going to feed the wires down there with all the others and then put the piece of trunken back on top so it's neat. There you go, I've run the wires down, I've put that top piece of trunken on there and then there's another piece of trunken that runs down here this piece here and the wires I've got now just hanging out at the bottom of there ready to do what I want with and they're here and they're out the way next we have step 7 which is connecting to the batteries we're not connecting the two wires we've run into the batteries they're going to go to a regulator so we need to take two wires from the batteries to the regulator this is what I've connected up here just a positive to the positive and a negative to the negative run the wires off these are supplied with the kit and you take them to where you're going to fit the new regulator on this side of the circuit it self tests itself it will light up and give you battery voltage and it will give you a bar chart of how full the batteries are then we just need to get the wires from the solar panel and join them to the regulator but look our little halogen bulb has decided to glow. Well, that's nice. There must be a little bit of sunlight or UV getting through to us now. And there you go. It's producing power on a proper grey and murky day. And when I say a grey and murky day, I mean a grey and murky day. Not much sunlight out here. Well, I've finished by running those wires from the solar panel the rest of the journey and into the regulator box. I only had 40 centimetres of wire of each to cut off. Now, up on deck, because before I removed the bulb out of the end of the wires, I went and shut the solar panel off from generating electricity by putting a carpet over the top of it, as I didn't want to arc or short anything and create any damage. But now it's all connected up, we can test the devil, we can let what little UV light is there is about and we know there's a little bit because the bulb lit and we can go and see what we got. Well, I think that's exactly what we had before we started. So I'm not sure, is there really a charge going through? I don't know. We had 12.7 and I'm sure we had 85% as well. I'd have expected to see that little note maybe on the bottom there where it says no amps to have actually put in an appearance and said maybe half an amp or something well let's have a peek at the regulator and see what the regulator's saying maybe that'll give us a clue well the instructions say that little flashing arrow there from the panel to the battery means that it's pushing a charge in and this agrees saying 12.7 volts 
Well, back to the battery monitor, and there's actually a little something happening. It's trying to move from 12.7 to 12.8, so a little bit of charge must actually be starting. Okay, a quick recap. The kit, I got one solar panel, 50 watts, capable of putting 3 amps into your battery when the sun shines. 5 metres of cable to travel from the solar panel to the regulator. One charge regulator. A waterproof gland to get through your idea coach roof or your bodywork or whatever. A fused wire to connect the batteries to the regulator. And a tube of fix all to seal any screw holes or bond anything down. I only actually added four stainless steel self tapper screws to this whole kit, which isn't bad. Well, it's the next morning. I'm back down the marina and there's a little bit of sunshine. And I've also had a thought, one of the thoughts I had was I'd put the um, charging cable, the little one, direct to the battery. Now it's going to charge the battery, but maybe I should have put it the other side of the shunt in order so it reads on the meter. Well, we'll have a little look now and see if it's been charging the battery with this little bit of sunshine. We were flicking on 12.7, 12.8 last night. We'll see if it's any better. Well, 12.9 is definitely better than 12.7 to 8. It's gone up a little bit and the percentage is at 95% as well. So there's been charge taking place, but it still shows no amps and discharge. So I think I'll move the wire from the earth to the other side of the shunt to see if it registers any ampage. This is my live wire, this can stay put. And this is my earth wire and I'm going to move that over here to the other side of the shunt but before i do i'm going to make things safe switch off the panel with the carpet and pull the fuse out the live wire then disconnect the earth off the battery lead there bring it round here and reconnect it up to the earth on the side of the shunt which will read the ampage hopefully anyway all we've got to do now is pop this fuse back in here with one hand it's quite fiddly but pop it back in make sure it clips into place and go back on deck and switch the solar panel back on by pulling the carpet off it well that's a success we're seeing charging taking place it's a tiny amount it's 0.1 amp which isn't a lot it's quite dark and overcast outside again the sun's hiding behind the clouds as usual there somewhere but we've got a little bit of charge gone up to 0.2 but this is positive and it'll look after the batteries and the batteries will come up to 100% I'm sure.